is inflammation, chronic inflammation. So as an example, we had a, a, a nurse here, she did some tests on her own, some blood tests, and she found that um, her cortisol levels were huge, really high, and she had, because of the stress that she was facing at work, she worked night shift, and she just moved here from a, from a different state, and all those changes in life can have a huge impact on the stress level in your body. So the way you think is huge, right? We talked about that in the past. We should actually be focusing on positive things and hanging around positive people. A lot of you get a lot of flack for even doing regenerative stuff like stem cells. You heard from people, oh, well, why did you spend so much money on that? Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Those are, those are the haters or the doubters. We call those people the naysayers. And you have to ignore those people a lot of times in order to achieve the results you want, right? Mike's going for the Olympics. There's a lot of people, this is Mike, he's a wrestler, so you should support him um, if you can. <laughs> but he's, he's right here at ASU, and he probably has a lot of people coming at him all the time with negative thoughts or words, and he has to overcome those in order to achieve his goals, right? It can be that usually we call the people that are closest to you the naysayers, people who don't know you, the haters. And sometimes the naysayers are worse than the haters. Because you can just dismiss the people who, who you don't know and you don't have a relationship right, with, right? But if someone comes and says, oh man, why are you practicing every day to go to the Olympics? That could be your mom, you should take a rest. You should relax. And sometimes it's harder because those people are the closest to you and they can create actual stress physically in your body because of the words that are spoken into your life. You guys get that right. You they understand influence that? your mood too. They influence your mood. Yeah, whether you're happy or sad or motivated or not. Physically, we find the fastest way to get rid of inflammation is by doing stem cells or regenerative products, PRP or those kind of things. That's the fastest way. Um, but there's little things that you should do throughout the day to break up inflammation cycles in your body. So. The first thing is the biggest lack that we have in our life is that our spine becomes sedentary. So to answer me this, as people get older, do they usually say, oh, I should do a little bit more activity? Or do they say, I should probably slow down a little bit? You ever heard that? I should probably slow down, I'm getting old. I'm 26 now, I should probably. <laughs> should actually, um, it's true that you have to slow down because of energy levels and because you have less stem cells as you, get, as you get older, but the fact remains that one way to break the inflammatory cycle in your body, for example, if you're seated, is to do a quick, quick movement, not a slow movement. So when it comes to exercising, everyone can do this. Even I had, a, I had a patient in Canada who was paralyzed, and I told him to just visualize moving your legs and your feet, and visualize below the, below the waist, because your brain creates connections by how you think. It, we see this on a microscope. If you think about something, you can actually create a new nerve to your shoulder or to your knee. So if you're thinking, and then they, they also test and say, if we have negative information coming in, the nerve will grow in a different direction than if there's positive information coming in. Did you know that? It's really cool. This is science. This is what they study on microscopes. So when you think to yourself, I can't do that movement, especially as you age, you limit your body's ability to physically fight inflammation. And it doesn't just mean that older people are guilty of that, even us, like I'm not flexible. That's, I hear people say that a lot when they're younger. I'm just not flexible. Well, I saw on, on social media, on the internet, I saw a lady over one year go from standing like this to doing completely doing the splits. And you should see what she did to do that. She was holding weights over her head, like 50 pounds while she's standing in this position. She was holding a 100 pound uh, medicine ball and Slowly, over about the course of a year, she got down to doing the splits. I personally don't want to do that, but I probably should, because the more flexible you are, the 
more your flexibility you have in your muscles, the less chance you have of getting injured over time. How old is she? She was probably in her late 20s, early 30s. Okay. I think she was over in Cambodia or, or somewhere like that. But she literally, it was, it was wild to see. Hmm. But it wasn't easy. So to, to fight inflammation now in the culture we live in, it's not necessarily easy, but it can be done. So for example, when we have we have people warm up, you guys have learned some warm ups if you get adjusted here. A simple movement while you're seated in the car or at home, you know that people tend to do this more and more as they sit for longer and longer. So to maintain your posture, that's a program in your brain. Your brain's always gonna go to the lowest available energy state. So it's gonna try to use as less as the least amount of energy possible. Why would it do that? Save energy. Yeah, save energy for what? Later. For later? <laughs> I mean, we're pretty simply built. The energy, the most energy we want to use is to keep ourselves alive, right? So our heart and our lungs and our liver and our kidney, they take priority over our muscles every time. So when, when the body is rerouting or diverting energy from the brain, it's to use in your organs to keep you alive, to keep you breathing. So posture, they've shown, did you know now if you're on your cell phone, for example, and your head's down a lot, there's an article out there, we put it out, that the kids are developing a bony structure in the back of their skull from their head being down so much because their muscles attach there, and they call it a horn. There's a horn that's developing on the back of children's skulls where a muscle attachment is because their head is down and you folks didn't grow up like that. You may have read a comic or had a newspaper down, but you didn't sit there for four hours playing video games on your phone or texting or you know, the average person checks their phone 100 times a day. So a simple thing to do is this is how you break up inflammation is you interrupt the cycle that you've de developed over the course of your life. And it doesn't take a lot of effort, but it takes conscious thought. <clears throat> so for example, if you have a sore back and you're sitting and you, yeah, you recognize that you're slouched, then the easiest thing you can do is just sit up straighter. That's an interruption. And then you, it's actually, if you slouched again, that would be okay, because that's an interruption. And then you sit up again. But if you do it slowly, you get a different result than if you do it a little quicker. Not, not like quick to hurt yourself, but quick to interrupt that pattern better. So if you go like this, and you go like this, and like this, and like this, and like this, four times, that will help pump cerebrospinal fluid through your, through your body, and it will help send better messages between your brain and everywhere in your body, because all the nerves that come out of your spinal cord control that. So for example, you see people like wrestlers, in between they have a three minute period where they go and they look like they're dead at the end of three minutes. And then they go to the corner to see their coaches and their coaches quickly, what do they do? They're uh, shaking out your arms, they're patting down your arms. Yeah. And your legs. Yeah, so they're hitting you, right? Yeah. There's, you know, they don't, they probably don't even know it. They just think, well, they were trying to get the blood circulating. That's not true. What they're, when you hit your arm, if you didn't have any nerves, you wouldn't feel that, right? If the nerves were dead, you if some people have neuropathy and you can hit their leg and they don't even feel it, you can cut their leg and they don't even feel it, right? Because the nerves have started to, to erode or die. So when they're hitting, they're actually stimulating the brain to tell it, hey, wake up right here. And it's a quick pat, it's not a gentle massage for the most part that they do. It's just like, like quick and it looks like you're shaking their arms up. That, that's what it looks like. They, they may not know it, maybe they do, but they're neurologically stimulated. They're stimulating the brain to reactivate balance or to get rid of inflammation, right? Your left arms get all inflamed, they feel like dead weights. Some of you, your bodies get all inflamed and it feels like a dead weight, right? So literally, all it takes is to go like this. If you have a pain in your ribs, you go like this. These are the warm-up exercises we teach people. But you don't think of this in your daily life, 
unless you're thinking about it, right? So you can do a quick twist like this, and not quick to break your ribs, but just quick enough so that you're not going slow, and when you go slow, you actually activate or reinforce spasm. So when people have a sore back, you've seen them, this is how they get up. Like this, right? And they're reactivating, they're telling the brain, oh, we gotta protect this area, so let's keep those muscles really tight. The problem is, is the back, or the neck, or the shoulder, or the knee, it needs to be, that, that <coughs> muscle spasm needs to be free, it needs to be moving properly in order for the back to actually get the right, or the brain to get the right information there for it to heal. Do you understand? So it would be better if where you got to where it hurts and you just dropped on your bum. It's better on a soft surface, definitely, but it's faster and then the spasm can engage. So it's better if you go to the spot and then quickly come up like that. Two things happen, the pain is actually lasts less because this is like five seconds maybe. Right? And this is like one second of pain. But in your brain, everything fights against you to do that. Because the brain is trying to guard and protect the area. So the whole point of what I'm telling you right now is motion is the key. And we probably told all of you, motion is the lotion, <clears throat> right? So this can apply to anything. Everyone's at a different level. But if you're reaching for something, and you go like this, that's reinforcing a lot of spasmodic and bad messages in your body. And I know you're doing it because it hurts, and I would do it too if it hurts, but then I think in my head, if I just quickly go like that, like that little movement, that could change your whole day. If you did that every time. So like a sit down, don't go quick. Well, and I was talking about if your back is sore, but on a hard surface like that, it's probably not the best to just drop down, right? If you get to a point and then drop down, that's fine. But the point is, is if you're like guarding and holding, that reinforces inflammation. So people bend down and they go like this, right? You've seen them do that. I've done that sometimes. It would be better if you got to the spot you still be smart, you get in a good position, you get to the spot, you go down and up. It's less time and it breaks up the spasm. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So that can go with anything. To create flexibility in a muscle, you should still do your stretches where you're doing slow, long, prolonged stretches, but you can also do like this and that can stretch out your hamstrings. That girl with the weights on social media where she was learning to do the splits, she, I, was, I was watching because I was preparing for this, and I'm like, holy cow. She was bouncing with 50, you gotta see this, with 50 pounds, she was bouncing, like going up and down, up, and I thought, ooh, that would hurt a lot. You know what I'm saying? But your body actually needs broken up routine. Your brain likes a challenge. And that's the second part, is if you get sedentary, if you think in your mind that it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a chair or you're capable of, uh, my brother-in-law swims with a 94-year-old guy who just was competed in a swim event. He's gone like 500 meters, 94 years old. That's pretty good. He can hardly walk, but he can get in the pool and swim. So you have to find something that you can do that breaks up your routine because your brain desires new information and it desires a challenge. And when it gets it, it actually reduces the amount of inflammation in your body. Why do you rest those guys? Do those go for the legs too? They do it for the legs, yeah. yeah. They, okay. they twist them and they hit them and they slap and them. Them in your ribs. What's that? Then it stimulates your brain. It stimulates your nerves, yeah. Oh. 
They would probably say they're trying to get the blood flow regulated again, I think. It would no. just take my mind off the match. <laughs> yeah, because there's just, literally, if, just if, yeah. you, if you push against, if a 265 pound guy pushes against another 265 pound guy for three minutes, they're literally exhausted. It doesn't take much, that's the other, the, the second thing that I was gonna try to tell you guys, it doesn't take much, I mean, that's a lot of effort, so don't get me wrong, but. It doesn't take much time in the day to change exponentially how much inflammation you experience. It doesn't take a lot of time. Go ahead. How do you feel about tapping? Tapping is great. Yeah, it's it part works. of it. Yeah, I'll tell you part of your nervous system is balance, right? right? So this this is something that you can use for balance. You get on here and you try and stand properly. So you get up here and this creates imbalance. It challenges my brain to stand properly, right? That's, that develops your muscle two times faster than if you just stand here and try and balance. Balance, you can, but everyone's at a different level. If you get on that vibration plate there after your adjustment, that challenges your brain six times to grow six times faster than being in gravity. So little things like that, if you do, if you have a vibration plate at home and you get on that, that creates massive change for you at the end of the day, because it interrupts your routine. If you have a little trampoline that you can bounce on at home. Does that help circulation? Or yes, that helps oh. circulate oh. lymph and other things. This oh. helps with food. The point is, is that when you get the right information to your brain, that's what helps decrease inflammation. Okay, that's, mo and motion is the key. So, <clears throat> again, if you're, if you're seated permanently, then even if you just move a little bit, most people try and slowly adjust. If you move quickly to one side, it changes how your brain adapts and perceives the environment around you, okay? So exercises, it has to do with everything. You know, walking is maybe an exercise, but I see a lot of people walk around my neighborhood, they're overweight, they look unhealthy, but they walk and they say, they think that's their, their health plan, right? Which is good, it's better than doing nothing. They're getting motion, they're getting moving. But if they just went and walked really fast, like faster than was comfortable, or did a little jog, for 10 to 30 seconds while they did their walk, it would completely change the outcome that they got during that walk. And that's called a burst or a surge training. But you can do that with reaching for the salt or pepper at the table, same thing. You make it a game, like I'm gonna quickly get the pepper. Don't spill it, right? But if you grab it, that makes, that develops your fast twitch, your fast fiber muscles in your body but it also helps decrease inflammation. And if you take a look at, in the Olympics, for example, you know, there's a lady who started running, sprinting when she was 69. She said, I'm gonna, I gotta do something, I'm gonna take up sprinting. She's now like 98, I think, and she's the world champion for people above 65. She wins the 100 meter dash. She beats people that are 30 years younger than her she started when she was 60, 69, I think, or 60 something. But she interrupted her life and did something about it. It's not too late. Your brain has a lot of capacity to heal you over time. That's the point. So if you're doing, I think the best exercises are just whole body exercises and you don't even need weights. So even if, you know, a lot of in the, in the um, osteoarthritis classes, they usually do like slow, make sure you do slow controlled movement. It's better to do less range of motion and more crazy movement, like jumping jacks or something quick, like bending and lifting your hands over your head. Like those kind of quick activities. You don't even have to do more than five of them. Or if you're seated, just trying to lift your hands up to your shoulders quickly instead of really slow. You guys follow? So the principle applies to everything you do. It's not just that you should do this exercise and you should do that one. 
you have to tailor that, and I mean, we could sit down and talk about that together, but you have to tailor that um, principle to every, and apply it to everything that you do, okay? So the second part is nutrition. So I would say 80% of your gut lives in your, 80% uh, of your um, immune system lives in your gut. So we chronically inflame our guts, right? By eating not the highest quality of food, but even if we try now to eat the best food that we have available to us, the average uh, American consumes about 150 pounds of chemicals every year. That's according to the EPA. In your food. So you take in 150 pounds of chemicals. I don't know how they measure that, but that's what they tell me. So the best thing to do is to eat really fast. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what I'm <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I would tell you to do slow is eat slower so your body has the ability to digest the food better. But it's better for inflammation to eat foods that are alive, raw, and that hopefully are healthy. So I'm not talking about like a raw Diet Coke. That's not, that doesn't exist. <laughs> or a raw cookie. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like food that grew out of the ground that's alive. Right? That's way better. And then there's something called the glycemic index, which you can look on because simple sugars really inflame your insulin production in your body. It goes and dumps into your blood. And when that happens, it affects your adrenal glands, it affects, affects your pancreas, it affects your liver. And insulin is one of the things that we see as an inflammatory marker that even causes heart disease and a lot of internal problems. So if you eat foods like berries, they're really low in sugar. Actually, they're combined with the right vitamins, um, antioxidants, minerals, nutrients to keep your blood sugar low when you consume them. But if you eat an apple, for example, a red apple, which where I came from, that was all it was, all apple orchards, love them. But those red apples, they spike your insulin levels really high. And the majority of people for three months of the year, you should focus and have a plan. You should have a plan that for three months, I'm gonna stay really focused on eating foods that don't have a lot of sugar in them. If you do eat sugar to curb the inflammation, you should add a healthy fat to what you're eating. So as an example, if you eat a carrot and you eat an avocado with it, that will balance it out. A carrot is really high in sugar. A beet is really high in sugar. A potato is high in sugar. But vegetables like green leafy things, they're not, they're, they're called a complex carbohydrate, and they very, they help you digest that food without spiking your insulin levels. So maybe we should put butter on a donut? You should put butter on a donut, exactly. And you'll have <laughs> good fat and bad fat. <laughs> <laughs> or, or now they make the bacon donuts, right? Bacon and maple syrup. Oh, yeah. You should put some wasabi on there or something. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of candied bacon. Put maple syrup on bacon. That's good stuff. And uh, sauce it and yeah. then put it in the oven. But then you have to eat it with some mayonnaise. Balance it out. Oh, you were what? Mayonnaise. Oh. <laughs> the, 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 the fat. You have some pancakes. Have some pancakes. So, yeah. So, so, in the 1910s, approximately to the 1930s, there was really zero incidence in the literature that we know of of heart, heart attacks, like people dying from heart attacks. I'm sure it happened, but the rate at which it happened was. If we're, being, if we're being generous, it was way less than it is now. But really, there was not a lot. Then this guy, one guy did a study called Ansel Keys, and he said, oh, you know what? Uh, saturated fat is really bad for you. Did you guys grow up eating lard, lard-crusted pies? Yeah. That's what I grew up eating, yeah. lard. Did you? Did your mom? Yeah. Still, yeah. You know, that lard is good for you because it balances out the fruit that's in the pie. You didn't know why, you just thought, oh, now someone in the 70s said, don't eat fats anymore. Because Richard Simmons came along with his shorts and said, saturated fat is bad for you. But three years ago, on the front of Newsweek or Time, I think it was Newsweek, they said, 
saturated fats are good for you now. You, what? <laughs> Did the fats change or do you just keep changing your mind, right? And there was one bad scientific study that changed a whole culture, changed a whole generation of people, the low fat craze. When you rob your body of fat, it increases inflammation and it actually increases your risk of cancer. If you rob your body of cholesterol, which is the main fat um, inflammatory fighter in your body, it's something that's a repair molecule, you will actually increase your rate of cancer and your rate of death. More people die with low cholesterol medication than people who have really high cholesterol diets. And that was on the front of Business Week about 10 years ago. They said Lipitor is a big scam. So inflammation can be caused by your food or your medication. And plenty of people now, we see them all every day, are still taking statin drugs. And it's crazy. It really, from my perspective, because if you read the data, if you read the research, what it actually says, those cholesterol molecules are 100% necessary in your body to help you fight inflammation. Now, the problem is, is if you have cholesterol because you're under stress, and then you eat some potato chips, then the trans fats stick to the cholesterol and they start to clog your arteries. So trans fat packaged food, is a real culprit for inflammation, anything packaged. But fresh, the fresh, raw, natural things that you eat should be at least half of your diet. So the way you measure that is by you look at your plates and is half my plate vegetables or fresh food on there or fruit. Better than not eating vegetables, but it's not going to be it's not going to be your best choice. A lot of those are devoid of nutrients because of the way that they prepared them and grew them. Yes. Uh, when we used to go, I uh, used to live in Montreal. Yeah. When we go to the uh, open air market, <clears throat> I would not buy any vegetables unless they had dirt on them. Yeah. Yeah. We used to I used to eat carrots right out of the ground with dirt on them and yeah. worms sometimes. But we kids don't do that anymore. Uh, no. Right? So that, I mean, that's a good way to find out if it's been, if it's come from the ground. Sanitized. Yeah. Dipped in. Chlorinated. Yeah. Did you have a question or comment? No. No, I was thinking more of the same line. Yeah, dirt. Eat dirt. My mother used to say you have to eat a dish full of dirt in the day. There you go. <laughs> Develop your immune system, right? Yeah, it's important. I've heard that your stomach is almost like a uh, forensic. have a little bit of cyanide in them and they actually help your immunity towards cancer if you eat apple seeds it's just enough that it's not going to hurt you but in that package of food there's cancer fighting things do you know that there's a, a vitamin called b17 it's from apricot seeds and that actually has been proven to kill cancer when people take that in really high doses but I, I never, I, I've never eaten an apricot seed myself, but I'm sure there's some way that all those foods, they're, they're like a package of health and also a package that helps you fight inflammation. It's different than the package that says Snickers on it. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't grow. There's no Snickers farms out there. Not raw, right? It's not raw coke. Yeah, no. Well, while we eat apples, we should eat the fruit. You should eat the whole thing. <laughs> the stem I don't eat, but it's good to eat the whole thing. Yeah, because your stomach is a learning tool for your body, for your health. So, food and then medications. Sincerely, we don't we we think that everyone's at a different place when it comes to medications. But when we study centenarians, like people who've lived over a hundred, the only thing we can find in common because people that come all over the world they live over a hundred. The only thing we can find in common is that they take the least amount of medication possible. And 
most of the people that live over 100 aren't taking drugs to help them stay alive. So there's a place and a time for drugs for temporary resolution of problems, but for long term, it's my belief system, if you change your lifestyle, then you can get off of most of those drugs. And the good part about it is when you get rid of those toxins, your kidney has to do less work, your liver has to do less work, and it creates less overall inflammation in your body, which is what we're focusing on, is the inflammation. Go ahead. My mother just turned uh, 100 in uh, July. Amazing. And uh, <clears throat> when she raised us, she, uh, uh, my grandfather, her father said, uh, uh, the worst thing you can do is go to a doctor. And don't go to a hospital. People die there. Yeah, it's so confused. <laughs> uh, uh, she doesn't take any medication at all and hasn't for, I don't know, like 50, 60 years. Yeah. And she, when she goes to a doctor, Get out of my office, you're disgustingly healthy. <laughs> Get out of here. Nice guy. <laughs> yeah. So I think the, the whole point of it is not just to be flippant or to be unwise with what you're doing. Like some things need to get under control sometimes. But there are natural ways that you can treat inflammation. Like, for example, cholesterol, you can use red yeast rice extract. That's an actual supplement that you can use to lower your cholesterol becomes an issue for you if you're under chronic stress or for blood pressure you can use like garlic is a major um, blood pressure reducer you can you, you can eat garlic and get rid of all your friends if you want <laughs> <laughs> yeah my, my buddy in high school before we used to have a hockey game he would eat a, a bowl of pasta with garlic in there and then he'd go breathe on all the guys when he was having face off and stuff hilarious but he really stunk I can tell you but uh, other things like the stuff you put on your body chemicals create inflammation like deodorant for example that's why we stock deodorant in the office natural deodorant because that seeps right into your lymph system and a lot of women get breast cancer right 41% of women get breast cancer yeah so it's because the toxic chemicals that go into your lymph system drain in your breasts are full of lymph and you when you have that contact with makeup and other products it just creates havoc and inflammation cancer is an inflammatory process heart disease is an inflammatory process but also arthritis arthritis the definition of it arthrosis is a joint and itis at the end of any word means inflammation so it means swollen joints and when you chronically have swollen joints you get a bent spine, you get a crooked body, your elbows don't work, your knees hurt, all that stuff. And athletes have that when they're 50 because they overuse their body so much. So Mike's not gonna have that. So keeping your inflammation down, there's one last thing that is the miracle. I mean, besides stem cells, which I think are amazing and, and I can't say enough about them, but there's one thing that's really hard to do and that's fasting. So if you can fast, two things happen. Your brain actually grows when you fast. By depriving it of the nutrients that you think are helping it through your food, your brain, like I said, is so amazing, it will go to another level of production when you starve it of energy. So the longest you could fast is about 40 days from food just water the longest you can go without water is five to seven days so to go a day of fasting I mean that's doable for a lot of people right you just don't eat for one day if you did that for one one day uh, one day per week for the whole month that would be 52 days that you've given your gut a rest from being inflamed and you've given your brain the capacity to continue to grow you understand intermittent fasting is the same thing so one day is 24 hours right so if you fasted say 16 hours you went from 7 at night to 7 plus 5 till noon the next day that would be 17 hours that's called an intermittent fast that's a great way to start 
Mike and I have been doing fasting, intermittent fasting for 24 hours, 36 hours, 48 hours, whatever we're going to work up to. And he's an athlete and you would think that he needs that, but maybe he doesn't know it yet, but it's actually going to help his performance in the long run because at that, at that level, and we're talking about health here, it's way more important than athletics, but at that high caliber level, you have to be like one second better than the next guy. If you're sprinting, it's like 0 0.01 seconds better. And any advantage you can give your brain to fire and help your body perform, in this case at the Olympics, but in your case, in your life for health, you win way bigger than someone who's not doing those things. So just to close it off, the three things are doing exercises quickly, interrupting your brain. The second thing is trying to eat foods that are non-inflammatory. And the third thing is fasting. It's really important. So my challenge to you is not just to sit here and listen to this, but things only grow when they're measured. I mean, things will still grow if they're not measured, but we only see what the growth is if we physically measure it. So what I'd love for you to do today is make a plan for yourself of one of those things that you would try to implement. You'll notice that if you're in pain and you fast, your pain levels actually go way down. And you don't drink coffee when you fast. You don't drink a bunch of other chemicals. You can drink some green tea or some water or some you know healthy juices, bone broth, something like that that's really healthy. But you'll notice because your body is being is able to take a rest that your pain levels actually go down. And your function in a joint or in a part of your body actually increases. So you'll you'll increase the if you do try to increase the speed at which you're doing things, you'll actually be faster if you fast. That kind of sounds funny, but you'll be faster than than you would ever think. What's the best time to fast? Is it seven right now. to seven AM? Twelve hours like that. Yeah, I mean if you use the night time as your fast time, then it's a lot easier. So if you went from like six till noon, that's 18 hours. Six at night, you stop eating, and you went till noon the next day, that's 18 hours. So you think 24 hours is best, right? Well, I think seven days is awesome. <laughs> I, that's the most I've done, seven days. So what Just do water. You do? Drink only water. Just water. So if we fast for one day, it's only. Well, you start water. slow. Yeah, or you could get bone broth, get an oxo cube, you know, an organic oxo cube, put it in a mug, put some hot water in there, and it will give you nutrients. In Arizona, in the summer, if you're sweating a lot, you have to replace your electrolytes. So we put sodium, we put salt and potassium into two liters of water, and we just drink that water throughout the day, and it actually gives you a lot of energy, right? Yeah. What about Gatorade? Gatorade? Gatorade has a lot of, of electrolytes in it, but it's got a lot of sugar, and it's got some dye in it, chemicals. So our alternative to Gatorade is coconut water. Coconut water has got a lot of potassium. It's got a lot of healthy enzymes and vitamins and minerals in it. What's that? No sugar. It's got, well, it's got, yeah, 11 grams, maybe 9 grams of sugar. Yeah. Um, I usually buy the stuff that's in the refrigerator. So if it's, it's called, there's a specific brand we buy. What's the second Pink. Thing that you, you can do that? Uh, there's Zico and there's. Um, Cause Costco has one. Yeah. They, Costco has this one. It's in a box though. You said like 12. Six, I think. Okay. Um, it's, oh, what's the, do you know the name of that? It's, 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 it's like CO2. Yeah, I know the CO2 one. That one's not bad. Yeah. yeah, but there's one There's one that you actually, in Canada we used to get it was frozen because they, they flash frozen. But here, uh, I'll get you guys the name, but it's it's a pink, it's a little pink bottle. The, the juice actually looks pink and it's from Young Coconuts. It's fresh. I don't know. Yeah, anyways. Any other questions?
good thing to work, I can put some salt in the water. Yeah, in two liters, you would only want to put like one half a teaspoon of salt. Two liters of half a teaspoon. That would be the max. And then we use, I use at my house, there's a product that has potassium in it. It's called No Salt. That's the name brand. You can get it at Walmart or Target or Rise or Albertsons, wherever you shop. But it's the brand name is No Salt and it's called potassium chloride. And that helps also rebuild collagen and rebuild the joints in your body. Those minerals, those salt minerals. So fasting, seems to be like one everyone can do quite easily what kind of broth is except mentally what was that the bone broth. broth just you can buy a tetra pack container of right. organic bone right. broth right. any store uh -huh. oh there was a yeah fresh chicken broth, broth oh, beef chicken broth. broth most have to be bone so chicken broth no that's no it has to be organic organic so it has to be organic yeah it doesn't it, it don't do the sure. low sodium stuff so usually the bone broth is you can buy it in powder and put it in water. I have I have a little tin. It's got powder in there, and and then um, you can buy it in vapors or aroma. You can also buy it in liquid form. You just heat it up. Or you just drink cold like this. Yeah, or drink it cold like this. Is that sodium bowl? Things you were talking about, like the bowl is powder bowl. No, it's full of sodium. You're, you're confusing though, sodium that the doctor told you not to have sodium when yeah. you take heart medication because of the medication, not because of the sodium. The sodium is okay. The sodium doesn't raise your blood pressure unless you're taking blood pressure medication. <laughs> <laughs> then it's contraindicated. So when we are fasting, then you think for the sodium. Yeah, because you're losing sodium because your body is searching for all the nutrients that it needs. When it starts to go, there's something on every cell called the sodium potassium pump. And it transports sodium and potassium to create chemical reactions. And there's chloride in there too. And so those things are actually essentially required for your nerves to fire. And calcium is one of them too. For your muscles to fire, you need calcium. You don't drink milk for your bones, you drink milk for your for your um, muscles, but people don't know that, and the milk here is crap too. <laughs> the milk here is really inflammatory it has all the sugar in it but those three things you, you have to write it's best if you write down like the days of the week and you write the one thing you did that day so you can see your progress over time this is for you guys you spent your time here it's important that you do this stuff because you want to be healthier and get the most out of your care and you also want to live a high quality of life so that you can do the things that you want to do right you don't want to be uh, uh, waiting around to be sick. You want to change your mindset and do the things that are going to make you healthy. You don't wait till you're 40 pounds overweight to start exercising. I mean, most people do, but that's not the best way to be healthy. That's just the best way to lose weight. Start sooner. Yeah. Yeah. Start early. So this is the one that I think everyone can do. It's not an extra effort. You want to reach for your cup, just reach a little quicker and bring it back. Do quick motions. That's super easy to accomplish and anyone can do that and interrupt how their brain is working. But my challenge to you is to try fasting at least once a week. 